south of Baltimore, nearly 4,000 miles, lies a city that was born a capital, Lima, Peru, great metropolis of the Spanish colonial empire, and for two centuries a chief stronghold of the old world in the new. The city of kings, Francisco Pizarro City, 1535 on the shores of the river Rimac, eight miles in from the sea, the rainless desert to her north and south, the Andes at her back. Look out your hotel window in Lima, and you will see a modern city, though much of old Lima remains. It is a charming and comfortable place. Though the equator is only 800 miles away, the temperature rarely goes above 70. There are dozens of little penthouses, which flat roof architecture makes possible. This is a city on top of a city with a life of its own. No city in our western world has a more interesting history. In early days, Lima was the source from which Spanish influence and culture spread over South America. Here was the center of political power, of social life, and of commerce. When in 1821, San Martin's army gave Peru her independence, a new Lima began. Regal pomp gave place to the ways of a young republic. Today. The new Lima is more and more like other modern cities the world over. Lima's old churches are a fine inheritance from colonial days, and equally enduring is the people's devotion to their faith. child of whatever social group grows up in a setting in which the church is a constant factor. Even the youngsters take entirely for granted their contributions to the charities of the church. At the racetrack, the visitor encounters the leisure class. Lima's population includes many wealthy land-owning families who are the present-day representatives of the immensely rich aristocracy of the old Spanish days. The middle class is in evidence too, as in racetrack crowds everywhere. In days of old, Peru had no middle class at all. It is still comparatively limited in number, but it is on the increase owing to the city's industrial and commercial development. Horse racing is gradually supplanting the bullfight in the affections of the people. It is always good weather for racing. It seldom rains in this part of the world, although there is a heavy fog almost every day. Back in the city's busy streets, one old Spanish tradition shows no sign of surrender, for it is siesta time. It is high noon, and everybody is about to close up shop. Even the busiest storekeeper still takes his two hours off at midday. He bolts his doors, hangs out his sign, and goes home. During this period, he eats a long, leisurely luncheon, visits with his family, and takes a nap.
Then he comes back to work. And the streets open their eyes slowly and are alive and busy again. earthquake belt which reaches all the way along the west coast of both Americas. Occasionally the quiet city is so shaken that the older houses, built often of plaster and bamboo for a mild rainless climate, suffer a good deal of damage. After each earthquake in former days, the city cleared up the debris and went on with a sort of resignation. But today there is a different point of view. There is a definite plan for gradually rebuilding the city to withstand the ravages of earthquakes. Well-planned building programs are not unusual in Latin America. Every capital has its changing skyline. But here in Lima, the new construction is going on with uncommon enthusiasm. A good deal of the city is to have a new look and its houses a new solidity and comfort. Already there is some better housing for the city's workers. The vendor of shaved ice and bright pink syrup is drawing his young clientele from much better homes. restaurants are rapidly increasing in number. They serve the hearty food of the country. Rice, fish, meat and bread for about five cents in North American money per meal. <laughs> 